it is. So where are we today, honey? We're heading out. We're just off of uh, Dane Street Beach in Beverly. We're keeping an eye to the sky. There's some thunderheads over there. We just need to be uh, watching that. It's been that way for over a week now, just the threat of thunderstorms. This video is the fifth in our series on sail trim and we'll explain how to sail your boat close to the wind in a point of sail known as close hauled. Close hauled is a special case of upwind sailing and makes use of the same sail trim techniques as other upwind points of sail. But it's unique in that we rely on the active and constant steering adjustments by the helms person to keep the sails working effectively. So let's look at our close hauled sail settings. First the jib is trimmed from two to five or six inches off the tip of the spreader. On a windy day when there's a lot of pressure, trim it two inches off the spreader to make the sail flat. On a lighter air day when there's not a lot of pressure, trim it five or six inches off the spreader so the sail has a curve and shape to it. This is close hauled rule one. The next step is to trim the main in hard. You should bring the boom right to the center of the cockpit. Then fine tune the trim of the main following the procedure from the upwind sailing sail trim video. It's important to maintain a flow off the back edge of the main. This is close hauled rule two. Trim the boom to the center of the boat, then fine tune per the upwind sail trim instruction. So this is what your close hauled sail trim looks like. The jib is trimmed in close to the spreader and the main sheet adjusted so the leech telltales are flowing smoothly. The boom is trimmed to the center of the boat. That's the sail setup. Now the crew can take a nap because rule three is fully dependent on the helms person. The key to handling the boat is to keep it at the right angle to the wind so that there's a smooth flow of air by both sides of the sails. And the best way to judge that is to watch the telltales on the front edge of the left of the jib. There's really two positions where the helmsman can easily do, do that. The first is to sit on the Fluid side of the boat and look ahead where they can see up the slot and uh, keep an eye on the tail cap. If you take a look from the side of the boat, the leeward side of the boat, you can see how easily the helms person seated right here can look up the slot and see the position of the uh, uh, jib telltales. And the helmsman continually adjusts the angle of the boat to the wind so that the leeward and windward telltales are both pulling straight back. An alternative position is to sit on the windward side of the boat and lean back to the outside. You can see the telltales on the front of the jib from the, uh, the windward side. It's just sort of a, a long reach to the wheel depending on the width of the boat or the size of the tiller. But either position is good. Sit to windward where you can lean forward and look in front of the mast and see the uh, telltales or sit to leeward where you can look up the slot and see the telltales. And that's all there is. If you're not racing, you don't want to sit and stare continually at the telltales. What I like to do is pick a spot on the horizon in front of the bow and use that as a reference for steering the boat. And then every two or three minutes, take another look at the telltales to see if you need to adjust the direction of the boat. With the helmsman sitting to one side of the boat and looking at the left of the jib, be sure to have a crewman designated as a lookout who sits on the other side of the boat and watches in particular the blind spots behind the jib. Selling close haul when the boat is healing a lot 
can be a lot more comfortable if your boat has cockpit combings which are angled flat so that you can sit high on them and lean against the lifelines. And if the boat is moving a lot, it can be more comfortable to stand behind the wheel watching the telltales by leaning to windward. 